All right, we've got 30 minutes until the main card starts on NBC Sports, so I'm going to go ahead and recap the prelims of World Series of Fighting 4 for you right now, starting with Isaac Gutierrez versus Victor Joe Boxer Valenzuela. And Valenzuela proves age ain't nothing but a number. He gets a rear naked choke at 241 of the second round. And it was a pretty competitive fight at a catch weight of 150 pounds. I actually thought Gutierrez got the better of round one. He was getting knockdowns and takedowns, but... In the second round, Valenzuela proved he was a crafty veteran and was able to get the submission. Second fight of the night was a fun bantamweight bout between John Robles and Jared Papazian, training partners and friends, but they weren't friends in this fight because Papazian kept dropping his hands and begging Robles to come after him. But Papazian was outstriking him for most of the fight, and it went his way on the judges' scorecards, 327 times 2 and 29-28. The Antonio McKee and Luis Gonzalez fight had a wacky finish at lightweight. It started out with McKee doing very strong in the first round. He was going for multiple submission attempts. Gonzalez showed excellent defense and was able to fight out of them, but it was still a dominant round for McKee, which I gave him 10-9. The second round was pretty much the opposite of that, as Gonzalez got the takedown and started raining down damage to the point that the referee warned McKee several times to improve his position or fight back or the fight would be stopped. He was able to survive till the end of the round, but he looked spent at the end of R2. He had taken a hellacious beating throughout the round. Then in the third round, we had controversy. What happened was Gonzalez stuffed the takedown 25 seconds in and then landed a shot to the back of McKee's head and McKee fell back dead like he could not continue, had trouble standing up, the whole works. The doctor waved off the fight, the fans were booing, but... Because it went to the third round under the rules of MMA, it scored on the cards. The judges have to score the third round, or at least in the state of California they do. That's what Jason McCoy instructed them to do, and they rendered a verdict that went in favor of Luis Gonzalez 29-28 unanimous. Now, if you have a problem with that because Gonzalez landed an illegal strike, I would say to you, look at the end of that fight closely, watch a replay of it, you might suspect that McKee was uh, embellishing a little, how shall I say? I, I won't say that it wasn't an illegal strike, because it was flush. I mean, you could see it on the replay. But at the same time, I think Gonzalez was clearly ahead by the end of the second round, had momentum going his way, and was well on his way to finishing the fight in the third once he stuffed the takedown and started doing damage. So I feel this was the right decision. Our final prelim fight may have been even more controversial, though, and that features former guests of Glove Up or Shut Up, Gerald Harris and George Santiago. At the end of the first round, we had a wacky moment where Santiago was trying to climb up for a triangle, and Harris was trying to slam him down. So Santiago grabbed a hold of the cage, the referee came in to break it up, and Harris thought that Santiago tapped when the referee broke it up, but that wasn't the case. He was just flailing around, and his hands hit Harris, but that was only because he lost his position when his arms were broken away from the cage. There was a one-point deduction for the illegal grab to Santiago. The rest of the fight went mostly the way of Gerald Harris, and he ended up getting the unanimous decision with the one-point deduction that led to scores of 29-27 across the board. Santiago probably won the third round, although my friend Heidi Fang had it 30-26, which I wouldn't necessarily disagree with, I guess Santiago's best round was the third, so if you were going to give him one round, that would be it. And Gerald Harris credited him as a very tough fighter, a former top five in the world, and thanked him for taking the fight, noting at one point he did get rocked by a high kick, but in training camp he learned to fight dizzy. His exact words. But Gerald Harris is kind of a character. If you didn't already know that, listen to our interview with him right here on YouTube. Now on to the main card on NBC Sports.